Welcome to Behold, the Real Jesus Broadcast, brought to you by the Jesus Only Broadcasting Network, located at www.jobn.tv, where you can go and see and hear the preaching of the Apostles' Doctrine of Christ, the Jesus Only Doctrine. Somebody said, well, I don't believe in Jesus Only. Well, I think you'll find this broadcast interesting, and, uh, and there, seek the Lord, and while He may be found, and He will certainly lead you and guide you and all truth. As we've been talking about the work of God in the last days, we talk about temple in the New Testament. There are two Greek words for temple. One is a hieron, and the hieron is an actual physical temple. It is a brick and mortar temple of, of uh, there that is constructed. You see a physical temple. But in the other, it is a Greek word Naos, which is a temple, but it is uh, metaphorically the spiritual temple of God with the Spirit of God in the body of Christ, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Just as Paul said, what? No, you're not. Your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, worship God in your body. That is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Whosoever goeth and defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. That is uh, naos. Jesus said, uh, destroy this temple in three days, I'll raise it up. He used the Greek word naos. Why? Because all the fullness of the Spirit of God uh, was in him. All the fullness of the God he had dwelleth houses permanently in Christ Jesus. Well, the Jews said, well, 46 years it took in building this temple. And that temple they used was a hieron, a physical, literal temple. So the Jews thought Jesus was talking about Herod's temple. But Jesus spake of the temple of his body. That temple, again, is naos, that physical, not physical hieron, but the spiritual temple, that spiritual temple being uh, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You are now that temple of the Holy Ghost. As I just said there, Jesus said, destroy this temple. Three days I'll raise it up. That temple there is Naos. They said, well, this temple was 46 year, years in building this temple. Will you rear it up in, th in three days? That temple is a Herod, which is a physical temple. But Jesus spake of the temple of his body. That is Naos. Now we are the body of the Christ. Naos speaks of the spiritual temple, which we are lively stones built up a spiritual house. And Paul said the same thing there. And the reason we're going here is to let you see that Paul knew Naos and Hieron and knew the difference between the two. In 1 Corinthians 3.16, he said, uh, Know you not that you are the temple of God? The Spirit of God dwells in you. If any man devile, defile that temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. That temple is naos, just as Jesus said in the temple of his body. Well, we see the same thing again in 1 Corinthians 6, 19. What? No, you're not. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. Therefore, he used again, the temple being naos, that spiritual temple. Then we see in 1 Corinthians 8.10, For if any man see thee which has knowledge, set it meet in the idol's temple. That temple is Herod. Paul then used a physical temple, an idol's temple, a physical brick and mortar temple. He knows the difference between Naos and Hieron. 
we find in 2 Thessalonians 2 when he talks about the coming of the Lord or gathering together unto him that you should not be shaken in mind by letters by us or an angel and that day is at hand, the day of Christ is at hand. He goes on and says, for that day will not come until it come a falling away first. The falling away, 1 Timothy 4.1, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the last day some shall depart from the faith given heed to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, having the conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidden to marry them, standing from meats, which God has sanctified by the word of God in prayer. This is a falling away. And he said, uh, there come a falling away first, and uh, that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God. So, or that is worship, so that he as God, notice the strong delusion there, a great deception that God himself will send strong delusion upon the people because they have sought their own ways, because the curse causes will not come. Your own ways have procured these things unto you. It's because we have transgressed against God in Daniel 8, 13, we have the transgression of desolation in Daniel 8. And that abomination to make it desolate set up in Daniel 11 and 12 is that abomination of desolation because of transgression, because we've sinned against God. Therefore, this Antichrist is against all that is called God, as that is worship, so that he as God setteth in the temple of God. Now, most people will tell you that the Temple Mount will have to have the temple built upon it again and go back to worshiping the red heifers being burnt outside the tra camp, ashes of red heifer spread over running water, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But he did not use a heron. He did not say a physical temple. He said uh, that devil sitteth in the temple of God, and he used... Uh, Naos. What is that? That Naos is Jesus is the head that's in heaven, and we are the body of the Christ that makes but one man. That is the church of the living God, and those that have been baptized of Christ have put on Christ, and he that's joined to the Lord is one spirit. We're one with the Lord Jesus Christ. We have put on a wedding garment. That temple of God is the naos, which is that body of Christ. It is the, the church of the living God, the ecclesia. And we're going to see that's exactly what Paul is talking about, that he as God setteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Now, remember, you know, when I was with you, I told you these things, only he did not let it with let until he be taken away. And he talks about... For now you know what withholdeth, that he might be revealed in his time. And he says, that wicked one will be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. So when the Lord comes, he will consume that antichrist, that wicked one. And he shall destroy it with the brightness of his coming. Somebody said, the coming and the appearing of two different days. No, it's not. There's only one coming of the Lord, one appearing of our great God and Savior. And when he does, at his coming, he will destroy the antichrist. Even him whose coming is after working Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. These lying wonders that anyone that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, I don't care if blue sparks fly off their heels and uh, they raise the dead before breakfast every morning. Neighbor, you don't follow the signs. You follow Jesus, and the signs will follow you. In the last days, if it were possible, it would deceive the very elect. Through these signs, miracles, and lying wonders. Why? Who's doing this? It's if with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth. They don't love the truth. They may have truth, but they don't love it. You have to love the truth. That's the fervency. Uh, many will say, I love God. They have the letter of the word. They go about mechanical worship, et cetera, et cetera. But the fervency, the effectual fervent, heated prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The love is the fervency. He that loveth God keepeth his commandments. I may know the commandments of God, but I don't do them. Well, that I'm not a faithful hearer and a doer of the word. I hear it, 
but I forget what manner of man I am because I do not keep the commandments of God, and therefore I will not be blessed in my deeds. Thus, whosoever you yield your members of servants to obey him are the servants to whom you obey, unto obedience, unto righteousness. The Holy Ghost is given to them that obey him. For this cause, God will send them strong delusion. Who's sending it? The same as it was in Ahab, and uh, uh, there was Jehoshaphat going to the battle of Ramoth Gilead, and uh, Jehoshaphat came up, and all the prophets went out and said, go up, go up to Ramoth Gilead. God will deliver them into your hands. But it didn't sound right to Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, Jehovah judged. And he said, is there not another prophet here? And Ahab said, well, there he is, but he always speaks evil of me. He said, let him not say so. Go ahead and get him. Well, the prophets went down there, the prophets of Baal, the prophets of Israel, and the prophets uh, that it says are like the foxes in the desert, Ezekiel 13, Ezekiel 21. Your prophets are like the foxes in the desert, for they have not gone up in the gap, nor made up the hedge for the children of thy people to stand in the day of the battle of the Lord. We're talking about the day of the battle of the Lord here. When he comes as a consuming fire, only the ones that know God are righteous and holy will stand in that day. The rest will be deceived. And God is the one sending the strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned. Well, did God do this before? Well, God is not the author of confusion, but he will give a man's heart to him that is merciful. He will show himself merciful. If you show yourself love, God will show himself love to you. But he that shows himself forward, that is perverse. God will show himself perverse to that man. For what you speak, you shall have. You guard your heart, for out of it proceed all the issues of life. If the heart is not on God, and it's on the worldly things of money, the love of money is the root of all evil. Evil. We find that the gospel of prosperity going through all the airways, and people just love to have it so, heaping to their self, teaching, teachers having itching ears. Itching ears is telling people what they want to hear rather than the Word of God. The Word of God is good, profitable for reproof, rebuke, and for correction. But if you're going to a church where there's no reproof, there's no rebuke, there's no correction, no one's helping you come unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Jesus Christ, unto a perfect man. Neighbor, it's time to stir ourselves up. For the Lord himself is the one sent strong delusion. When the prophets of, of Israel went down there to get Micaiah, that is like Michael, who is like God, Micaiah, who is like Yah, the Jehovah, Jehovah Lord God Almighty, Jehovah. Well, Micaiah came up. And they said, uh, uh, they have, he said, I would, Micaiah said, they have, I wouldn't so much as even look at you except for Jehoshaphat. And uh, they said, uh, well, now, what does the Lord say unto you? Micaiah started, uh, uh, they're making fun of them. Uh, they're saying, well, go up, go up to Ramoth B. Gilead. God hath delivered them into your hands. And they have said, I jeer you in the name of the Lord, uh, Speak the truth. Micaiah said, I saw the Lord. And all those standing around him, sitting around the Lord, the angelic host, saying, who will go down and uh, make Ahab to go up to Raveth Gilead and fall there and die there? Well, one said this, another one said that, but there's an angel that said, I will go down and I will be a lying spirit to Ahab. God said, go. Why? Because Ahab's a liar, and out of his heart, it will be dealt to you the same measure, whatever you have dealt out. A liar will be deceived by their own lies. Well, that's exactly what happened, Michael. They, there, they threw him in, uh, uh, the, gave him the bread of affliction, threw him in the dungeon, and Ahab said, uh, I'll deal with you when I come back. Micaiah said, if you come back at all, the Lord hath not spoken by me. Who sent it? Well, the Lord did. Why? That they believe a lie out of their own heart. They didn't believe the word of God. They didn't have the love for the truth. Therefore, God gave them up to their own lies. 
for their own derision. They are literally God that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but they had pleasure in unrighteousness. They never gave God the glory due unto his name. They did not give the Lord uh, that he is the Lord Jehovah God Almighty. Now, Paul goes on, and uh, as we come into the, the Naos and Hieron that Paul spoke, now we're going to see in Revelation, John, in uh, the Revelation of Jesus Christ. He wrote the Gospel of John, the three epistles, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and then he wrote the book of the Revelation. In the Revelation, where are we at now? We have a ceiling going on for those that love that truth of God in these last days. They have the angel sends out of the east, from the east, having the seal of the living God. And uh, he's going to seal the servants of God in our forehead. Why? Because there is a great evil, a great tribulation, a northern army, a locust horde, a polyon and a baton coming upon the face of the earth to try the earth. And uh, we find this seven head, ten horn, and ten crowns upon this beast rise up out of the sea like a leopard, feet as a bear, his mouth as the mouth of a lion. Dragon gave him his power, his seat and great authority. Where is Satan's seat? Satan's seat in Revelation 2 is seat is in Pergamos, the church, one of the churches in Asia, where Satan's seat dwelleth, where Satan's seat is. That is among the church. Where are we seated? We're seated together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus at the right hand of God that Jesus prepared for us. And we find uh, that this dragon, this, this, this antichrist, uh, this beast, they worship the beast. Who is likened to that beast? Well, the dragon is a false father. That, that beast is a false son of God. And the false prophet is a false lying spirit in the, uh, the Holy Ghost, trying to copy the things that God does. I said, who's able to make war with him? Mouth was given him, speaking great things and blasphemies. Power was given him to continue 42 months, time, times and a half, three and a half years, 1,203 score days. We have to be prepared because with this ceiling, because it was given to this beast to make war with the saints, the saints of the living God, the ecclesia, the church, the naos of God, the temple of God, and to overcome them, power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. All that dwell upon the earth, whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life, slain from the foundation of the world, will worship this beast, this false Jesus, this false Antichrist. If any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. Hear, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with a sword must be killed with a sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. We have to know these things uh, and this faith that overcomes even unto the end, uh, even uh, overcoming the Antichrist by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, loving not our lives uh, unto the death. There's another beast coming up out of the earth. This is the first beast. They think that's the Son of God. And another beast coming up is the image of the Son of God instead of the image of the Father. It's a false doctrine of God. We're going to see what that is uh, here in a few minutes. Uh, and he has two horns like a lamb. Jesus has seven horns, which are the seven spirits of God, because he is that spirit. The Lord Jesus is that Father of glory. He has seven spirits, seven horns, seven spirits of God sent forth into the earth. That lamb is that spirit. But Notice he has two horns like a lamb, and that's not a capital L-E-M-B. It's a small L-E-M-B, and he spake as a dragon. They think the Son of God is nothing but a man. There he exercised the power of the first beast before him. He makes fire to come down from heaven, and he deceives those that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Those that have not the seal of God in their head will worship that beast. What is that? They'll take that number, which is, uh, count the number of the beast. It's the number of a man. His number is uh, 600, three score, and six. What is that? Well, 600 is the number of warfare. It is Christ. And what's the number of six? It is Christ the man. 
So here we have 1 Peter 1, 10 11. The Old Testament prophets search in what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ that was in them when it signified, when it testified beforehand, the sufferings of Christ. Christ is Christ. Christ is that Spirit that made himself a body of flesh and blood and as a man revealed, which is G, Jehovah, Sus. Jesus uh, is 606. The, Jesus Christ come in the flesh. But what's that 60? 60 is uh, and denies it, and it's written as it's a key Z. Key is Christ. Z is a serpent. It's written as a coal snake, and stigma is six, number of man. Therefore, Jesus Christ is not come in the flesh, is the mark of this beast. It's the mark of a man. They will not give Jesus the glory due unto his name. Therefore, in the last days, uh, they'll take this spiritual number. They're not going to take a little a literal uh, uh, mark and stamp it on your forehead or in your right hand. It's in their foreheads. Uh, it is in their right hand or in their forehead. Somebody said it's a, a little chip put in there. No, it's not. Would to God it was. Nobody's going to take that and have something put in their head or in their, fore, in their forehead, walking around with something beeping around in their head. It is a spiritual number. It's, a, it's your faith uh, that is literally in a false God uh, that Jesus Christ is not come in the flesh, and that is his mark. It's a number of his name. It is a number of a man, and that man is uh, a false Christ. That Christ, what is that? That any spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Well, Jesus Christ is the Father of glory. He is the Son of God. That what? It's the Spirit of God. Well, what is that? Galatians 4, 6, any spirit that God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, one of the self-same Spirit. He has sent forth the Spirit of His Son. What's this? This is the body of Christ. That is now the naos. That's the temple of God, which temple you are. That is 606. That's Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. But Jesus Christ is not the Father of glory. They said he didn't come in flesh, that he is the Son of God, and that is that mark of this man. It does not give Jesus the glory of the Father. It gives him a lesser glory. He's not that Lord is that spirit. They said, no, he's not. Yes, he is. He is the Father of glory, and that is the mark of that beast, 600, three score and six, written as a snake. 60 is rebellion. It rebels against the true Christ. What is that Christ? 1 John 2.20, you have an unction from the Holy One. Not a holy trinity, a holy one. And you know the truth and no lies of the truth. 1 John 2.22, who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that has denied both the Father. Why? Because Christ is the Father. And the Son. Why? Because Christ is the Son. It is one in the self-same Spirit of God. One spirit, not two, not three, but one. Take a look at Revelation 16. I heard a great voice of the temple. Now notice here this temple is again not a Huron, not a temple there on a temple mount. It is a naos, a voice out of that temple. That temple of God saying, go your ways, pour out the vials of wrath. First went and poured his vial upon the earth. We're finding out that these vials of the wrath of God are being poured out. Why? Because it's a judgment of God, because thou hast judged us. This is a righteous judgment of God to render tribulation to them that have troubled you, Second Thessalonians, the first chapter. Why? Because they've shed the blood of saints and of the prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink. I heard another voice out there say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. Judgments of the line. Righteousness to the plummet, when God does his work, his strange work, and brings to pass his act, his strange act. They literally scorched, they men were scorched with great heat. They blasphemed the name of God. They hated the name of Jesus, uh, which had the power of these plagues. 
Now, what I want you to see, they blasphemed God of heaven because their pains or sores repented not of their deeds. Watch the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. That means they're breaking forth. The water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. Somebody said that that is China. Well, what if the kings of the east and the east is RMD, that that's the kings uh, and priests of the Lord our God, that we might be prepared. I saw three unclean spirits. Now watch it now. You have to see this. Three unclean spirits. There are three. You want a trinity, there it is. I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon. That mouth is a pay. It is out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Jesus is the Father of glory. He is the Word. He is the Holy Ghost. Christ is the Father. He is the mouth of Jesus is that Holy One, that He is the Father of glory. If they deny that Jesus is the Christ, they've denied both the Father and the Son, 1 John 2, 22. 2 John 9, any spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, that, that is a spirit of Antichrist. What is it? These are the spirits of devils. Somebody said, how dare you? Working miracles. You mean a devil can work miracles? That's exactly what it says. Go forth to the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. What is that? That the people of God must stand in that day. There's a tribute. What is that? That's a false father. That's the mouth of the dragon. The mouth of the beast is one that's given the power. That's a false son of God. And then what's that false prophet? It's a false Holy Ghost that is uh, dividing him up with three different spirits rather than confessing him as one. Neighbor, we're just trying to say that we must go on in to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ and to a perfect man. It's time to lift up the true Jesus, the eternal God, uh, and beside him there is no other God. He knows not any. He is that Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, which is, was, and is to come. He is the Almighty God. Well, until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus. Well, praise God, neighbor. In the last days, the Lord God himself, Jesus Christ, will send strong delusion upon all those uh, because they received not the love of the truth and might be saved, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. We're well, making an offer to you for this month. Call the Great Deception, the Key Z Stigma, the 603 score and 6, and the revealing of that beast, the number of the beast, the number of a man. For a gift of $15 or more, just mention BBM, offer number 60, and we'll get the book, The Great Deception, 603 score and 6, out to you. The Mark of the Beast, the number of a man. 603 score and 6, the key Z stigma, out to you. I know that'll be a blessing to you. Well, until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Beard saying, Behold the real Jesus.